Um, we have a live stream going here, but we're also recording. Just make sure you're standing in the middle for that yeah, up here. there so we can see it. There we That's go. perfect. Um, why don't you introduce yourself and let us know why you are here. Okay, I'm Ulrich Hartl from the Max Planck Institute of Biochemistry in Munich in Germany. I'm here because I'm one of this year's winners of the Breakthrough Prize in the Life Sciences. And we are getting the prize. I'm sharing this prize with my colleague Arthur Horvich from Yale uh, for discoveries regarding protein folding. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. We read about it, about the chaperones that assist proteins to go through, like the membranes and things like that. Is that correct? The chaperones help proteins to fold into their correct three-dimensional shape. And that's important for them to be functional. Without that, protein chains are basically useless. And uh, the chaperones make sure that nothing goes wrong in this folding process. So you work together with another scientist. How did you guys link up? Like, how did you start working together? And you don't live in the same areas, so how did you logistically make it work? <laughs> that was uh, a collaboration that started in the late 1980s and early 1990s. Uh, Arthur Horvich was at Yale and I was in Munich. But we found out about our common interests through conferences and also through my supervisor at the time. Walter Neupert, uh, at the head of the department in which I was working. I was then a lot younger than now. <laughs> and uh, then this collaboration started with uh, mutual visits and uh, many phone calls. This was before email. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. You couldn't even text him either. We couldn't even text him either. <laughs> so um, the actual shape of the protein is like really interesting, the way that it looks. Yeah. Can you... like? briefly or somehow explain this is a young science minded audience or YouTube audience how do you actually know that that's the shape of it like is it using pi mole like what are the ways that you actually can yeah. see first of all to know whether a protein is correctly folded uh, you know that when you can measure the activity of the protein okay, so if it's for working. example if it is a, 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 an activity to metabolize a certain substance and that is usually how we determine whether a protein is active but there are other physical measurements spectroscopic measurements that tell us about the type of fold a protein has and the ultimate method to determine a structure of a protein would be x-ray crystallography or cryo-electron microscopy of course protein molecules of course are extremely small yeah. but you can visualize them in the microscope and you can resolve the uh, fold of the polypeptide backbone of the chain and so is that, that's what you used in order to visualize the shape of this specific protein? That's what we sometimes, what we sometimes use, yes. Cool. So what does it mean to be here, being awarded with the Breakthrough Pies, getting to walk this red carpet, go in this yeah, amazing fancy, event? How fancy, fancy. It's very exciting, obviously, and a great honor and recognition of our work. And not only for me personally, but of course for for all the people who worked with me over many years. We have many students and postdocs. And I, in fact, I worked very intensely together with my wife, Manachi. She's also oh, a scientist wow. yeah, for the last 30 years. And uh, yeah, it's uh, exciting. Okay, so we have two questions that our audience has wanted us to ask all the scientists that come through tonight. The first is that um, given that you kind of study things on such a micro scale, you get to like look at life through a lens that many people don't think of it. How does that impact your view on life and the meaning of life? Well, it's, it's really a miracle what happens in our cells. And almost daily I have to think about how fantastic it is. It's like... Uh, like a micro universe that happens in our cells. So we are not going into space to explore something, but we are going into the very small scales of our cells and the molecules that function in our cells. I think it's equally exciting. There are lots of things to be discovered still. Uh, well, I'm not personally very religious, but if I wanted to be religious, then I would say that is what I admire and uh, where I see... Uh, some divine entity in nature. Cool. That's a really great answer. I totally agree. And our audience also is a very young audience, and a lot of them were asking about climate change. And so I was just wondering, they, all of the scientists here tonight, scientists and science communication, what we do is very important for what's going on. And so I was just wondering, what is one thing that you think that we can think about or do in regards to dealing with climate change and the global warming? That's a very difficult question. I personally don't think that there is a, a doubt that climate change happens. Uh, and there are various ideas about uh, why it happens. 
One prevalent idea, obviously, is that rising levels of CO2 in the atmosphere play an important role. And as you know, we can do a lot of things to reduce that. Uh, but I think it's only going to work if there will be really a concerted effort, not just of one or two countries, but uh, many countries worldwide, uh, including those who are the most responsible for CO2 production. By the way, we are uh, doing work on uh, the system, on the biological system that, uh, that absorbs CO2 huh. from the atmosphere, which occurs in all of our plants. You know, yeah, plants okay. are taking up CO2 from the atmosphere, and that's where, where we are working on together. And uh, people are trying to make this process more efficient. This could help in uh, accelerating the growth of plants and crop plants, obviously. That's an important uh, issue because we need to produce more food in the future to uh, produce enough for the growing population. And it will also take up more CO2 from the atmosphere, potentially. Hmm. And is that using similar types of research that you're doing, that you were being awarded for here with protein? Absolutely. And, and those proteins that are responsible for this process are particularly dependent on the chaperones that we uh, just talked about. So on the molecules that help proteins to fold. Amazing. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much. much. It was a really pr a pleasure to meet you. Do you mind if we ask you some questions as well? Are you okay as a scientist? Like, yeah. That's what we yeah. want to talk about. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I guess we have a similar question in what we were asking. Like, you work together or you look at the world in such a specific way. Do you, does, has it shaped the way that you think about the meaning of life, the work that you do? Yes, absolutely, I think. The meaning of life. That's a difficult <laughs> yeah, question, yeah. But I mean, you know? have to think about it yeah. and, with science. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think, uh, as uh, Ulrich mentioned, that, you know, our cells and everything, how they function. I mean, it's so complicated. Uh, we only understand very little about how the whole system f functions in a unified way. Uh, for years and years, you know, and I think that's our challenge to really uh, sort of, you know, understand every sin single aspect. We only work on a certain aspect, aspect. the chaperones, yeah. <laughs> and then there are a whole group of scientists who are working on all the other different aspects. And I think in the future, you know, that's so exciting in science is that when we meet each other and discuss and understand what the other scientists are doing. This is, uh, I mean, it's just incredible. This is a nice aspect of yeah. the Breakthrough Prize, that yeah. we are yeah, we... now meeting colleagues who work mm -hmm. on very different things mm -hmm. and obviously have done fantastic, uh, <laughs> this, have made fantastic discoveries. Yeah. So what is it, the research that you two work together? Can you give us a brief synopsis on it? We're working on the aspect that I just mentioned. So it is, specifically. About and it also is. on the uh, specific function mechanism of how these chaperones work. We, we still have a number of questions that we need to address. But it is thinking about how to get CO2 to be absorbed potentially more by plants? Yeah. So basically the protein that is involved uh, makes 25% uh, a mistake of binding oxygen. Okay. And that's the problem. So yeah. yes, exactly. So the protein was evolved at a time when our atmosphere had no oxygen. So it cannot distinguish between CO2 and oxygen. Wow. And and it's very yeah. yeah. And it's also a very chaperone dependent <laughs> protein. So we, we need all need to understand. <laughs> exactly. we all need and this is an ancient protein. It evolved more than three billion years ago. So it, uh, we're trying to understand and trying to figure out how it could, you know, stop making such a mistake. Wow. Okay. Well, thank you so it's much. Inspiring. I know we took a yeah. lot of your time. Yes, you we really awesome. appreciate it. Yeah, we'll <laughs> see you when we're in there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Have you. a nice night. <laughs> All right. Oh my God! So chaperones amazing. are yeah. gonna help with CO two. Um, that's so. It's, I think we just get so excited whenever we're talking to yeah, scientists. Yeah, she's like, you literally did take she's a lot like, of our time. we have to go. <laughs> they have to go do like ten other interviews now that they're like, oh. <laughs>